Hey everyone, it's Maddie and me and welcome to our second Dorito Day. It's been a while since we've read anything so we're using today to motivate us mostly to read books that are relevant to our creative writing dissertations. We got up at 7.30 and promptly started reading at 8 o'clock and we both started with an Outlander book. I read the last 150 pages I had of Dragonfly in Amber and I read 100 pages of Voyager putting me 250 pages through. Might try and read a little bit more of this later but it's really not our priority which is why we got it done first so it was out of the way. And I've had this on my currently reading since the middle of August so I've definitely put off finishing it um, but over last night and this morning I managed to read like 300 pages or something that I had left so it really proves how much you can read if you put your mind to it. Then I also read the last 45% I had of Shadow Crown by Kristen Martin and I absolutely loved it. It's like a high fantasy with lots of different characters and perspectives and they're all woven together really really well. I wasn't expecting some of the reveals and I'm so excited for the second book even though the first one only came out like a couple days ago so I'm gonna have to wait a really long time for it. After putting down a Voyager I decided to go with The Haunting by Alex Bell. It is getting close to Halloween now so it's the perfect time to get into some horror books. I have Frozen Charlotte with me but I bought this one yesterday for 99p and I was like I've bought it let's just read it right now whilst I'm in the mood. I'm 70% through it now so hopefully I'll finish it within the next like 40 minutes. So the book I'm going to move on to now is Stags by M.A. Bennett. This is about an elite society of boys and I think there's murder going on if the blood on the cover is anything to go by. <laughs> I decided to pick up Only Ever Yours by Louise O'Neill next. This is one of the top five books I said I wanted to read in 2017. Leaving the bone season is the only one I have left. I read about 100 pages of this from a library a couple of weeks ago and then never picked up our own copy because it was at university. And then we've already been at university for two weeks and I didn't pick it up even then. So it's finally time I get around to finishing it. We're just having lunch now as it's 12.30 and we've done a lot of reading <laughs> since the last clip. I've managed to read all of Stags, which was 300 pages and then B, how far through only ever yours did you get? I've got about 60 pages left. Oh, okay, so quite <laughs> far through as well. So we're going to sit down and eat lunch whilst watching 13 going on 30 because we've had it in our heads the last couple of days and just not sat down and watched it, so I'm really excited. So we finished watching 13 going on 30 now and it's such a good so film. Good. It stands up even though it's 13 years old now, which is absolutely crazy. And we were looking at the actors that played the young versions of them because now they're all 30, like the actual age that they grew up to be in the film. So it's kind of insane how much they look like Jennifer Gardner. We really enjoyed it. And now I just want to veg out and watch more movies like that. I feel yes. in the mood to just kick back for the rest of the day. But no, it's read all day. It's time to get back to reading. I've got 60 pages left of Only Ever Yours and I'm going to try and do it in one sitting. So I have two books to choose from for my next pick. The Exact Opposite of Okay by Laura Stephen and Not That Kind of Girl by Siobhan Vivian. I picked up both of these books at Yalk. This one is an ARC and this one I got for one pound. And they both feed into my dissertation in some way with their feminist themes. This one has super big font and this one is on my autumn TBR. So there are pros to going for both of them but maybe I'll go with this one because I'm already a chapter through and I definitely think I need that to help me get into reading again after watching a film. As for Stags, it definitely wasn't as awesome as I thought it was going to be. On the front it says nine students, three blood sports, one deadly weekend. And because of that I knew it was going to have a very clear structure and throughout it's set into these five different parts so it's plotted really well but it's not as dramatic as I wanted it to be. There's blood on the cover, I thought it was going to be more intense than it was. In the end I don't really think I understood the society. It's split into medievals which are three boys and three girls that come from rich backgrounds and then savages who are the less well-off characters or the less established characters because two out of the three do have a lot of money it's just not the right kind of money. The medievalists want to go back to a time when hunting for sport was the thing you did rather than hang about on social media and I didn't really understand the message that was going on. I also really didn't like that film references were relied on so heavily in this book. There's one on every other page I swear and not all of them are within the pop culture. I feel like like the one that's relied on the most hardly anyone would have heard about. And it's other things like that where film references stood in the place of description that I didn't gel with. Overall, I think I'm gonna give it about 2.5 stars and I'm not sure if Bee's gonna wanna read it after I tell her about it.
So I just finished Only Ever Yours and I didn't really like it, but I'm not sure if it's a book you genuinely like. It was a difficult read and I knew what it was doing to the absolute extreme, but I'm kind of disappointed in the ending because I totally saw it coming. So I wish it had been like even more subversive in a weird way. And I don't think I mentioned previously my thoughts on The Haunting by Alex Bell. And that's because all I thought of it was that it was a really quick horror read. There wasn't much to it. It was just very easy to devour. There were three characters, Emma, who was in a wheelchair after a horrendous accident caused in part by the siblings Jem and Shell. Shell thinks that she's a witch and that the house that they're living in is haunted. And she's starting to get hallucinations and she sees all of these birds everywhere, which is obviously a sign that she's going crazy. I read it mostly because it had witch in the description and I'm writing a witchy story for my dissertation. So I was just gonna add it to my bibliography, but I don't know if I'll be able to reference it in any way because I don't feel like my story is gonna be using any of the devices that The Haunting used. I have 80 pages left of Not That Kind of Girl by Siobhan Vivian and I'm finding it really interesting so far. I've actually tabbed quite a few things because this is giving me lots of ideas on how to represent different attitudes towards feminism in my dissertation piece. I was a little bit apprehensive going into reading this because Not That Kind of Girl sounds a lot like Not Like Other Girls, which is my least favourite YA phrase. And yeah, there's definitely that attitude going on, but I think it's being examined in a really interesting way by having two characters that have polar opposite opinions on female sexuality. The next thing I decided to pick up is Freshers by Tom Ellen and Lucy Iverson. And just flicking to the front page and seeing their dedication to Maddie and I reminded me how much of a fun time I had at Yalk. So now I'm kind of oddly excited for next year, even though I haven't thought about it since. Freshers was on my autumn TBR and I really wanted to get to it and read it whilst I was at university. And we're going home next weekend. So hopefully I'll finish it before then so I can exchange it for a different book. I'm 92 pages through at the moment and I'm really enjoying it. Although I'm reading it a lot slower compared to the other things I've read today. I think that's just because I'm having so much fun and I don't want to do any skimming because the characterization is so incredible and the dialogue is witty and unique and so far it's been a really accurate depiction of what Freshers is like. I really wish I'd been able to read it in my first year of university or even before then. It's coming up to six now and I'm finished with Not That Kind of Girl. I did end up really liking the feminism aspects of it and thought it had some really interesting things to say about slut shaming. I just wish that the focus wasn't so heavy on the romance in the latter half of the book. Would you recommend it to me? Yeah, I think I would. How many pages was it in the end? Um, it was only 320 pages and That's I read right. 20 pages before today, so 300. I'm now 120 pages through Freshers and I'm really enjoying it, but I'm getting through it rather slowly. So I'm hoping to read a bit more of it tonight, but I'll probably end up finishing it tomorrow. And I've added a couple of extra tabs onto the ones that Maddie already has because I definitely want to reread this again. And then I am now like 70 pages through Bone Gap, even though I was about 45 already. So I haven't read that much, but this is one of the books that I said I was going to read yesterday for Read All Day. So I'd be disappointed if I didn't get it done. I'm not enjoying it as much as I wanted to, unfortunately. It's got that small town vibe, but on like a very surface level. I just want it to be as magical as this cover and I thought there would be some more magical realism, but then again, not that far through, so we'll see what happens later on. As for what I'm moving on to, recently I got Kindle Unlimited, the 30 day trial. So I'm just scrolling through the books that they've got on there because we have a new emphasis on the latter half of the year on self-published or indie published books and Kindle Unlimited is really great for that. So I'll just scroll through and find one. I mean, that's what we used to read when we first got our Kindles in 2013. Yeah, for sure. I only read the free books. So this is gonna be our last update for this evening. And then tomorrow morning, we will go over what we read afterwards. So it's the end of Read All Day October, and it was a really, really successful time. So I chose to go with Magic in Her Bones by Kelly Sheridan, which was a supernatural story based in Ireland about a bunch of different supernatural creatures and a girl that was kind of connected to all of them. I read all of it whilst also watching Strictly Come Dancing, which was really lovely. <laughs> and it was really short. I think it was under 200 pages. And I know that there's a sequel, so I think it feels like two halves of one book. I finished Bone Gap by Laura Ruby. This was a bit of a disappointment to me, and I think that's just because I typed it like, up to here uh, before I read it. The narrative wasn't what I was expecting because it's about this girl that goes missing, but you get a focalization from that girl. Mm. So it's not really a mystery. It was like lacking that intrigue that the blurb mm. was promising. And the lyricism of the writing was fun to begin with, but I don't think it was like enough to push the story forward. And sometimes it relied too heavily on that. So for something I thought I was going to really fall in love with, I just didn't. Whilst I didn't finish Freshers on a read all day, I finished it the day after. I gave it 
it five stars. I absolutely loved it. We've talked about it in quite a few videos, especially yeah. the one where we recommend books to read before university. So we'll leave that link in the description. So once we'd finished those books, we decided to get one of the books off NetGalley that we'd been reading for a couple of months on yeah. car journeys. And that's Meet Cute, which is an anthology of 12 love stories, but this time with a much higher emphasis on LGBT relationships than any other anthology we've read. As with any anthologies, there are the highs and the lows, but we only thought we'd mention the highs here because we'll do a written review of all of our thoughts so that we can properly like dissect them. So our first favourite was Emery Lord, of course. She is one of our standout authors mm. this year and her story was absolutely beautiful. It was about lesbians and airport and it yep. was everything I needed and I really want her to continue this story. Yes, it was definitely one of the stories that you kind of felt a whole novel yeah. needs to be about these two girls. So they clicked instantly as yeah. well and it was so cute. I think they had like a little like fake spy thing going yeah. on as well, Everything. which was A++. Then our other favourite story was by Jocelyn Davis, and I've never heard no. of this author before, but hers had kind of a geek girl vibe about a girl who was on the subway one day, spotted a boy she liked the look of, and then tried to see if she could spot him every other day, and then eventually get to meet him and tell him how cute he is. At the beginning of the story, we didn't know, like, if we were gonna like yeah. it. I think it, you know, it, it settled into itself. It had one of the best endings of the whole anthology, and it felt like the most complete of all of them like I would love a full novel about these two but this was a short story it wasn't just like cutting off once they'd met. And I also think that it was the longest story it, in the yeah. collection which probably was to its favour. It and that was our second read all day we're really pleased that it was as successful as the first and hopefully that says good things about the one we'll do in November. Thank you everyone so much for watching and we'll see you on our next video. Bye! Bye.